Welcome to Fully Charged. This is the new Nissan Leaf version 2.0. I'm going to be driving this car, well, not this exact car in a matter of a couple of hours because we are actually at a motor show. What you just heard was the sound of the future. But this is it, this is the new Leaf, this is the best-selling electric car around at the moment. So if we come around here, it's very popular this car as you can imagine. It's got a more aggressive front, it's still got a bit of a beak like the old car but it's definitely more attractive. Most of them are two-tone, you can see the charging area is underneath this flap here. There's blue accents if we come around here, it's got this interesting little bit of detail here in the rear pillar that goes into a more aggressive frankly less frumpy rear end here the new car looks faster it is faster but it looks it you've got things like um, this tasteful rear diffuser panel here got lots of blue blue paint inserts which i do think looks good you've got the two-tone the black tailgate i think that is a bit slick wonder where they got that idea from Vauxhall Ampera but I think it looks a lot a lot better than what the old Nissan Leaf did then you've got something called the Nissan Leaf Nismo which is a concept which they've unveiled at this particular show and it's just behind you come and have a look at this so Nismo if you don't know is like the performance arm of Nissan they make uh, racing inspired cars they tweak things like the range topping GTR They've gone and done this. So this is what they're saying is that they're going to be building an electric hot hatch like Renault have done with the, uh, the Zoe RS concept. Nissan are doing the Nismo concept. So whereas the old car there, or I say the old car, the traditional normal flavored leaf, it's got a rear diffuser. This is a, a bit more accentuated again. This rear bumper is different. It's more pronounced. You've got more sculpted side skirts. And then you come around the front and again, just like the back, you've got additional, this is a bit of a Nismo hallmark, you've got this red lip spoiler. And actually you've got a whole two-tone bonnet. So there, where your charging flap is, that's now become a feature with the two-tone paint. It doesn't look radically different. The original Leaf could come in 24 kilowatts or 30 kilowatt flavors. This car is 40 kilowatts. So the NEDC feature of this car is 235 miles. What Nissan is saying in the real world, it'll get 200 miles to one charge. This is quicker to 62, eight seconds to 62, sorry, three and a half seconds quicker off the line than the old car. It's 148 brake horsepower. The old car had 41 less horsepower than this. It's even got a bigger boot. I believe the boot of this is 435 litres to the old car's 370. So if you look in it, this is a big boot. This is a big boot. This is bigger than the e-golf. This is bigger than the old Leaf. This is a big boot. It's not a flat entry boot. It's still got quite a trough. It's still quite narrow. But nevertheless, there's a lot of stuff you can fit in it. The back seats, it's a 60-40 split. It's all the practical stuff that you want to know. And they don't fold flat. Um, so bear that in mind. If you come in here and you're expecting something radical, you might have to look somewhere else. This is quite conventional. Don't get me wrong, it's not unpleasant. It's quality, it's well appointed. You've got your, your little rotary nodule, which is familiar to the first gen car. You've got a steering wheel, which is pretty much straight out of a high-end Micra. Seven inch touchscreen infotainment here. Personally, I wish they'd been a bit more ambitious with the interior because it's quite safe and quite sensible. I'm not really that kind of person. But don't remember, this is a five seat, five door, sensible family car. That button and that button, these are the important things which Nissan are talking about. That is the e-pedal button and that there is the Pro Pilot. These are two functions of the new Leaf which Nissan are really, really keen to harp on about. So the e-pedal button, what Nissan is claiming here is uh, that it's done a world first and it's made a one pedal car. 
a car which you only need the throttle to control. When you come off the throttle, the theory is, Nissan says, that it will brake uh, to a standstill if you wish um, as soon as you come off the throttle. In other words, quite aggressive regen braking and conventional braking. The Pro Pilot, that there, well, that really uses um, adaptive cruise control. It, it also has Pro Park, so it's autonomous parking. Um, so I think this is a first for Nissan where they use the uh, adaptive cruise control to be able to bring the car to a, a standstill again, if you wish, by using autonomous emergency braking. I can't lie, I'm not hugely inspired by the inside of this car, but then again, the inside of the previous car wasn't massively inspiring. I just think Nissan are being quite conservative. They just wanna, they just wanna get more people in the seat of electric cars. And they've obviously succeeded with the first gen car, so they want all the people that bought the first one to buy this one, and all the people that didn't buy the first one to buy these anyway. And then what they'll do is they'll use all the underpinnings of this car, the chassis of this car. They'll put a crossover body on the top, in the flavour of the Qashqai, in the flavour of a Duke perhaps, and then they'll sell even more of them. So you watch this space, in two years time, there'll be a lot of electric crossovers in SUVs with Nissan badges on. That'll probably be very reliable. And by 2019, Nissan says this car will have a real world range of 310 miles. Well, what better place to drive the new Nissan LEAF than in its hometown of Yokohama? This is where Nissan's HQ is. This is where I'm driving today on a very sunny day. Nissan don't call this um, the Mark II LEAF. They call it version 2.0. It's weird because you forget how long the LEAF has been out. This car went on sale, I think, late 2010 and already the world has changed. Seven years ago, when the Leaf came out, it was really being released in a world of um, uncertainty for EVs. And now, this second version is being born in a world where Nissan have sold 300,000 of these. It's no longer so left field to want to drive an electric car. The world's moved on and so has, thankfully, the leaf. But first things first, this is uh, not so much a facelifted um, leaf to a completely new leaf really. There are some underpinnings which it shares with the old leaf but really in here is different and out there is very different. When they released the first leaf I thought it looked a little bit there. I thought it was a bit odd looking and not particularly attractive considering Nissan bring out cars like the Duke and the Qashqai, I thought they might have had a little bit more flair, but they were playing it safe. This, the second generation, the V2 uh, Leaf, does play it quite conservatively again in the styling department, but it's certainly way more attractive than the original kind of parrotfish. Now, although I don't think that the aesthetics of the Leaf are particularly cool, bear in mind this car has been styled heavily using the wind tunnel for ultimate efficiency. It's 0.28 uh, drag coefficient. It's got an underside which um, has got special channels um, for air vortices. What that means is um, to create the least amount of drag underneath as possible and to channel the air into places where it needs to go for cooling, probably things like brakes, maybe um, the battery compartments. This car is the best-selling electric car to date. This is the real world attainable, truly affordable Leaf. Remember now, Tesla haven't brought the Model 3 out. So until they bring the Model 3 out, there isn't a lot of cars that have got this kind of spec for this kind of money. This will out outgun the e-Golf, uh, BMW i3, uh, Hyundai, Ionic, all those kinds of cars have a lower range than this. We've got a real world 200 mile range here. 235 on the NEDC. We've got a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. So they've made the car lighter. Nissan won't tell us exactly how much lighter, but they've made the car lighter because they've put more dense battery packs into the car. 
Nissan say this is 15% stiffer than the outgoing car. The other car, the outgoing car was quite soft in the suspension department. I much prefer the ride of this car to the old Leaf. You can notice its stiffness and you can notice that its suspension has been improved. And even at lower speed, it, it corners a lot flatter. Now they say that the UK version will have um, even more recalibrated suspension to suit UK drivers and UK roads. Uh, we'll have to wait and see about that. Don't like the sound of that. The seats are very comfortable. They're still quite flat squabs. They're not sports seats, uh, but they're, they're nice and kind of spongy and comfortable for long journeys. The thing that does annoy me slightly, lack of adjustment on the steering wheel. You can't pull it out or push it in. Sorry, that was an, a warning to tell me that there is a, a, a scooter rider who just cut me up, and sure enough, they did. Do enjoy gliding about. Oh. Yeah, I like that throttle response. I do like that. Not to 62 and 8 seconds. The, the last car was 11 and a half seconds to 62. So that's a significant improvement, three and a half seconds. Although it's a very congested place around Tokyo and here in Yokohama, it still feels quite tranquil and quite relaxing. Now I'm going to test something called the e-pedal and this is one of the groundbreaking um, features of the Leaf. The e-pedal, in Nissan's words, uh, is the world's first one-pedal car. So it turns an auto, which is a two-pedal car, into a one-pedal car. So when I turn this on, there we go, um, you get a blue logo on the dash. When I take my foot off the gas, it will bring the, there you go, it will aggressively, um, regen brake to an absolute standstill like that not even any creep so with this e-pedal function on they reckon the leafs deceleration uh, is capable of 0.2 of a g of force and it can actually negate the use of brakes in an urban driving environment by up to 90 percent 90 percent it takes a bit of getting used to, I've only just switched it on, um, and it does feel a bit like you've got binding brakes on a car or your left foot braking, but if it works, it works. It means it's more aggressively harvesting uh, power off the front axle. It has twice the regen capability of the first leaf, in actual fact. Let's get a real flavor of this uh, e-pedal then. So I come off, the throttle is a, there's a pedestrian crossing. So you do get used to judging how much you need to leave your foot on the throttle before you can bring the car to a standstill by just rolling off the gas, not even touching the brake pedal. So presumably that means you've got better regen, it means you, you wear your brakes even less than you would. It does use some brakes apparently, it's not just pure regen. It's saying I've got 320 kilometres before I need to plug in and fill up. It's a good range though, isn't it? They reckon by 2019, uh, this car will have a 310 real world mile range. That's the thing to bear in mind. Nissan have brought this car out, second gen Leaf, in that interim time between people like Tesla bring out the Model 3, Jaguar is bringing out the I Pace, you've got other companies who'll be upping the ante with revamped versions of things like the i3 BMW. So this car's got to be fairly future proof because it's going to have a hell of a lot of competition imminently. This e-pedal is taking a bit of getting used to, honestly, it feels very odd. It just feels like you've got something wrong with the car, that the brakes are stuck on slightly through lack of use. The rear view mirror of the, this Leaf model, this particular one, has got a rear view camera and it's very odd because you look at it and it's a TV screen as opposed to being uh, just a mirror. Um, I can't quite get used to it. It's just looking, it's like looking at CGI. You don't quite believe what you're, you're viewing, but Nissan tell us that this is not going to be available on the UK Leaf, so I won't take too much notice of it. Um, in terms of visibility, actually, the, the C pillars, the, the rear roof pillars are pretty thick. 
um, and the roof line tapers off, similar to the outgoing car. Here you've got these little little extra windows down here, so these huge chunky A pillars, which they normally have for safety reasons, they're not that bad for visibility because of that extra viewing porthole in there. I'm going to go through the uh, the graphic display now. So we've got it transfers some of the information on there from Apple CarPlay. It tells us what what track we've got lined up. It, uh, we've got a compass. How many kilowatt hours per kilometer you're currently doing what your average speed is what your range is uh, am i get this right yeah on the right you've got a um conventional analog speedometer on the left you've got um it's a digital a graphic screen which you can scroll through using the thumb buttons on the, the wheel here i've just got a, an economy meter so it tells you how much power you're using and how much regen braking you're getting Ooh, what does that mean? I didn't ask you to do anything or say anything. Oh, have, have, I, have I inadvertently... I don't know what you mean, love. I, I, I haven't asked you to take me anywhere. Des oh, I'll go where you want me to go. I'm, I'm up for a, a bit of exploration with my e-pedal. What's it doing? What's it doing? Japanese symbols. Oh no, it's phoning, it's phoning. Who's it phoning? Don't phone anybody, don't phone anybody. No, no. Who did I just try and phone? I don't know who I just tried to phone because I... I'm gonna turn off e-pedal and bring it back to normal because Oh wow, so we're going down um, uh, quite a congested little side street now in Yokohama as the sun is starting to set and there's a Morgan parked at the side of the road. How very British with the number plate 13. Unlucky for some, and the, is that the guy who owns it? Yes, the guy who owns it's dressed like a 1950s golfer. This is brilliant. This is what I love about Japan. This is great. Awesome. I don't know what to do. Oh, I wish I knew you were. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you're trying to take me. Because I never actually typed in any satnav command. So how could you be taking me somewhere? I don't know anyone who ever bought a Nissan Leaf and was disappointed with it. Everyone I ever spoke to who spent money on a Nissan Leaf said it was brilliant. Really good car to live with, extremely reliable, does exactly what you want it to do. So undoubtedly, the Nissan Leaf is one of those cars that's converted a huge amount of people over to the EV side, even though they might have bought it initially for a bit of a tax swindle and they thought I'll just, you know, have it for a bit, see what it's like, reap the benefits and then punt it. Actually, I think it's, it's had a huge influence on this electric car appreciation and for that we need to be very, very thankful. Even though creatively it might not look the best. You know, this car is in its second generation and yet Honda is still unveiling concept cars that are going to be EV only. Honda doesn't have an electric only car. The sun uh, has almost entirely set in Yokohama um, and I've got slightly lost around the docking area. Um, some conventional navigation and I'm hopefully going to find my way back to Nissan HQ because they need this car back in eight minutes. Um, but yeah, I have to say I'm, um, I'm warming to this car more and more. I never doubted the way it drove. Um, I like the way it drives. I think the e-pedal system takes a little bit of getting used to because it feels quite alien, 
the concept is great and Nissan say it's a world first it's a one pedal car um, let's try this the pilot system so pro pilot it uses adaptive cruise control it uses autonomous braking and I think it uses um, auto parking combines all of these things to give a, 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 a semi-autonomous drive which is a first for Nissan incidentally even though it exists with other manufacturers okay I've just set the cruise control at uh, 50 kph that's 30 miles an hour and it just says pilot in front of me so let's see what it does it's backing off when it needs to back off which is your usual adaptive cruise control behavior it's accelerating when the vehicle in front accelerates there's a barrier no barriers have come down on the car so let's just keep going <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm lost in Yokohama. Uh, I'm, I am looking out. I've, I'm doing 10 kilometres above the speed limit around here, and I'm checking every single mirror for ninja police, which are a real thing. We were warned about the ninja police. I think what they are is unmarked police cars that take no prisoners when it comes to speeding. But the fact that they actually call them ninja police is great. When you turn e-pedal on, I, I keep turning it on and off as I'm driving just to try and get familiarized with its aggression um, I'd say it probably is the equivalent of, of level three the most harsh regenerative braking on the e-golf um, and if you can get used to that then it's fine but like there you go you take your foot off and it just breaks to stand still there's still that addictive fizzing noise that you get here we are this is it we're about to finish our drive of the new leaf we're going into nissan motor company limited global headquarters sayonara leaf oh goodbye I wasn't able to explore all of the technology to its full potential in this short test drive. For example, Nissan's Pro Pilot system, which is part of their intelligent mobility. Now, I tried to drive it around uh, Yokohama. Um, I did not go on the highway. Um, I was mostly in congestion and I didn't find it to be particularly good. Saying that, I am slightly mistrusting of these systems at the moment because what they do is they tend to lull you into a false sense of uh, trust and then when something happens which it can't control, it just wants to hand it straight back to you, which I find is a bit odd because it's a, you're either in control of the car or you're not. And me, being a driver and an, an enthusiast, I really want to just drive the car. Nissan do say there'll be a second and third generation of this Pro Pilot. One will be called Highway Pilot and then the third gen will be called Intercity Pilot. And what these will do is these will allow the car to automatically change lanes and overtake. Um, and these will come out in the next two years. Um, I dabbled a little bit with the Pro Park, which is part of this package as well. The Pro Park is a self-parking system, which has been seen on, on a lot of cars in the last five years. And it does work, um, albeit very, very slowly. And in my opinion, if you can't learn the size of your own car and you can't park your own car, you shouldn't really be driving it on the road. So this Nissan Leaf that I'm driving is obviously the Japanese launch version. There will be some tweaks to the UK um, Leaf uh, and Robert is actually going to drive that car very early in 2018 uh, and that will have slightly tweaked suspension and probably a bit of the technology. Hopefully the steering will be a little bit more inspiring and a bit sharper but these are minor changes and this is pretty common in the car industry when they're selling the same car to different territories. The Leaf's the quiet, confident game changer, isn't it, really? Nearly 300,000 of these have been made, and yet it doesn't really grab that many headlines like the likes of Tesla. The thing about this car is that undoubtedly it has brought so many people into the world of EVs, and I reckon this is the car that will do what the Prius did to hybrids. This makes electric cars the norm. And while it certainly isn't revolutionary, it's definitely a sure-footed evolution. It could be a little bit more creative inside, but you know, you know what, what this thing does really, really well is it makes electric real-world motoring pretty affordable.
There's no doubting what lies underneath this car is very, very decent. Decent propulsion, decent drivetrain, a good wholesome range, and all the kind of mod cons that you'd actually want in an everyday commuter car. I mean, last time I looked, the Ford Focus wasn't particularly brilliant to look at, and the Fox Lastra, and they're all the best-selling cars in Britain. Nissan's done a really good job of turning over a new leaf. I can't believe I've just said that. And maybe I'm being a bit harsh on the aesthetics of it, because the more I look at it, the more I like it. It just depends what colour combination you go for. I like the back, maybe I'll just walk round to the back instead. It's alright back here. 